B marker take one. B marker take one. everyone my name is Kabibi and I am a supporting artist this is something that I do on a full-time basis I say full-time but it's not that I'm working every day clearly I'm not working today <laughs> I'm actually having a home day today and I thought I'd do a bit of YouTubing and I thought I'd do a video on supporting artist work and when I say supporting artist work it's commonly known as film extras but they have recently in, in the past years few years change the term to supporting artists sounds a bit more bougie sounds a bit more like you know we're, we're a bit more important but yeah it is a film extra in essence and um yeah so this is something that I do I have been signed up for you clearly have an interest because you clicked on the video so yes you've come to the right place I'm definitely going to give you all the tea all the goss all the info you might need in order to make a decision for yourself as to whether this is something that could be for you or you don't think it is for you and you'll leave it right here. Um, also, if you have any questions as well, that anything that I don't answer in this video, this is literally a video that I just thought to myself to do, you know, from yesterday. I've thought of some points in my head and let's see how we go. <laughs> um, but yes, I've been on everything from Batman uh the batman movie uh to willy wonka which is um finished filming now but that was filming last year some of the marvel films as well um eastenders and a plethora of things i mean i have several agencies and i'm always working and i think sometimes i forget how much i work or what productions i work on because a lot of these productions they have code names so you're not actually given the real name of what the production is obviously because they want to keep things under wrap you know there's um uh non-disclosures that we sign you can't really talk about things and you know it's not out about us also when we're on set as well we are warned prior to us coming you know this is not something that you need to be taking you can't take pictures and videos and everything else um and sometimes we'll have our phones taken and uh, uh, taken away from us as well which actually mainly happens at warner brothers studios but yes <laughs> Um, so yes, that is the essence of this video. I'm going to try and make this very quick. I know I do, forgive my table, it's just, just having a moment. It's, I don't think I screwed something firmly into it, so it's, yeah, it's not the quietest table. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, but yes, this video is, is a very, going to be a very short video. I'm going to try not to ramble. I'm going to try and really keep my sentences succinct i do struggle in that area i am a talker but i will um endeavor to make this a very short video just some tips just some info and insight as i said um as to how uh things can be for you if you if this is the possible career or something as a filler maybe just a job filler that you want to do it would be great if you could subscribe and also share this with anyone else you've been having discussions with because i think this is going to be quite a helpful very short but helpful video so let's get to it um first and first and foremost i want to just jump straight off the bat i'm not going to use necessarily any fancy terms let me put my laptop on silent um, I'm not going to use any kind of fancy terms, terminology, stuff that you'd have to start Googling afterwards, hours after I've, you know, you've watched the video. I'm just going to keep this very layman's, very basic, down to earth. Um, so yes, what is a film extra? Someone in the background, basically. Someone that could be placed drinking tea at the cafe, having a beer at the pub, um, you know, a mother pushing a buggy in the park anything that requires you know a production crew and a crowd as it were that's another definite um, another term for film extras um is you could you could be anything absolutely anything um so yes that is a film extra in essence in in just very short that is a film extra someone in the background of the main or of a scene um where you have the talent the main actors 
and being filmed so yeah film extra work is something that you can do full-time some people i've met will do it full-time i do it full-time technically i do choose my hours i choose when i want to work if i don't want the job i don't want to work that particular day i'll say no um i've met many people that are literally doing this seven days a week booked and busy up and down from london to wherever jet setting um, I'm not trying to make it sound glamorous by the way but yeah they're off on a plane somewhere doing something um, so yes film extra work is something you can do full time it's something you can do flexi some people also have a job I've met people on sets and you know as part of the crowd and they have a job full time job that you know obviously this climate it's called for a lot of people to work at home some people won't be going back to their office ever so as long as I guess they have they're able to work um, that I've met people on sets who do have a job, but they use sometimes occasionally they might do a day's work on a filming set. So yes, I wanted to also put this in as well. Who is I guess who is who is film extra work for? It's for anyone that wants it. It's a very flexible job. Um, so you are a lot of the time. I would say that this job is in essence, as I've kind of come to know it as, they're, bu they're buying your time, you're getting paid for your time. Whether you'll be working every mo moment of every day when you're, you know, from when you kind of get into the car park and get on, uh, get into the studio, is another matter. Sometimes you won't actually end up working at all. If it's a large crowd, you could be uh, sat in the holding area all day, um, or you could be used a lot and, and and not even reach the holding area for the whole day. It just depends on what the scene is, obviously what the director is trying to achieve. So if you are interested in being a film extra, a supporting artist slash supporting artist, um, yeah, it's quite a simple process. The, the, the two things that I would say that you need immediately are a phone for your camera or a camera, of some sort and then also a tape measure two things that you're going to need if you want to start to go onto these agencies websites which i will actually leave a few in the that i'm signed up to on the um on the just in the description box just as i guess recommendations for you about good agencies and yeah that's what you'll need you'll need your tape measure because when you start to apply or when you visit these websites a lot of them are going to ask you, you know, the same questions and it's best that you have a tape measure and a pen to write down on paper what your tape, your measurements are. It's everything from, it's pretty much head to toe really. Um, and, and then obviously you can use that information just to put every site rather than having to keep on measuring yourself and it just gets a bit long. So you've also got your camera as well and... Uh, you probably need to take some pictures. So I would say a headshot of yourself and um, and then a mid, mid maybe a mid shot as well and then also a full length as well full body length of you is what's required for most startup applications they want to see something ideally on a plain background as well so if you can't you know if you don't have a plain background as it were then maybe try to if you can't do it on a, you know take out the background on an app on your phone um, then I would probably advise just putting up a sheet or something like that, a white sheet just to take a picture on. And yeah, that will be that. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be looking amazing. To be honest, if, yeah, this leads me on to my, one of my points is that uh, you want to, you know, when, when they're looking to cast you, if you get onto the agencies, you are going to be, you know, the casting age, the, the people that are responsible for choosing you on the production end, um, they are looking for people that they can change up into the character that they have in mind. So when it comes to you having your pictures taken, you don't want your eyelashes on, I mean, I've got my eyelashes on now, <laughs> but you don't want your eyelashes on and, you know, long nails that are purple um, and, you know, fluorescent this. And you just want to keep it basic. Keep it very basic. Be stripped back, stripped down, your natural face, basically. Um, your hair ideally not bright um, bright colors and stuff like that it's you know your your natural hair um, and yeah they you know they as I said they want to see that they can change up your look so if you get, get stripped down as possible get stripped down in terms of your look then it's, it's like a blank canvas to them you're more likely to be booked on a plain look than you are if you just 
kind of, you know, because of course this looks great, but okay, if I'm going to do party, they're looking to cast me for a party somewhere in a production. Okay, I might get the job. Apart from that, which is most of the time it's not, it's just day to day. Um, yeah, they, they would pass you because they can't see how you look. So that's what I would definitely say as I'm saying this. I'm just going to run through just a few pros and cons once again this is just so you can get an idea and a feel of if this could be for you if this is not for you um if you have anyone in mind maybe that you know that would you know definitely this would be fitting for them um so i'd say i'm going to start with the pros first i would say it's it's you can get into this at any age the pros are that you can get into this at any age. You're not too old to work and you're not too young. There's, you know, people that have got, you know, their children working in production on, on sets and stuff like that. I've been people's mum on set. Um, and, you know, oftentimes they have chaperones on set because obviously they are children. So they need to be looked after and everything. Um, and also in terms of legal requirements and stuff like that with children on set it's just a whole different ball game it's a definitely a no-nonsense thing with regards to children on sets um but oftentimes they have chaperones not their own parents with them so yeah that's that so you're not you're not too old and you're not too young to work in production that's one thing i will say which is fantastic i have you know one of the benefits of this with of supporting artist work as well you meet a lot of people people from all sorts of backgrounds people as I said that work some people that are retired some people that are grandparents some people that are you know just uh you know trying to get into the acting industry who are fairly young I've got I've met 21 year olds 18 year olds. It, it just it all varies it's all differs because naturally as well when you've got a crowd scene you've got different types of characters different ages uh different looks it, it all matters so you meet all of these people back behind the scenes as it were so that's one of the another pro of this job is that you meet a lot of people if you're a people person this could be for you if you're not a people person on some days this could still also be for you you don't have to speak to everyone <laughs> you know it's okay so um that's one thing i would say definitely is that this is as a pro this is definitely something you can get into at any age and it doesn't require that you have any kind of education or anything um, and even as well, if you have any specialist skills, it's even more amazing because you can also put that on your application. And, you know, thus when um, when jobs come through, briefs come through uh, from their clients uh, with regards to what they're looking for and who the agency wants to put forward, you know, that they could select you for based off of your uh, your special skills that you have, your skill set if you do any kind of um, martial arts or stunts, if you do stunts and you've done that and, you know, there's doors open like that for those kind of people. And that's that's another great thing about this job is that it's all inclusive, as it were. Um, and so, yeah, it's definitely an equal opportunity employer, this, this, kind of, um, this kind of line of work. Another thing I would say is that it's very easy to get overtime, very easy to get overtime in this kind of work. And of course, our overtime looks different to that of, I, I guess, uh, you know, those nine to fivers in offices. Um, this, yeah, it's very easy because there's different uh, breakdowns in terms of when, how long we work for. If we are working maybe six to six hours um, and we haven't, in terms of six hours, I mean that when we arrive, our call time of 5am and we haven't had lunch by, um, it would be then, I believe, 12pm. So, you know, seven hours of being there. Then we, um, you know, there's pay that's added on for that. Um, continuous working day and broken lunch and all these different terms, which, you know, that would be easy definitely to um, Google. I might even put a link down under... Um, below in the description box as well for you to check out but there's a different there's a breakdown in pay so you'll often get your basic but you know I would say that on, on definitely these heavyweight productions in terms of when I say heavyweight I mean lots of money big budget stuff like that um, and if it's a definitely a large crowd you know oftentimes I'm walking away with away with a few hundred pounds a every time uh, and so yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, daily, and that's daily. So I would say, you know, but then as I said, you've got to also equate it to your time as well. So some people will hear a few hundred and go, oh my gosh. But then obviously if you look at the time you've been there, which is often, you know, anything from, 
I mean, I guess sometimes you could be released really early. Maybe it might be a six hour day. Sometimes it might run into being a 15 hour day. If the director needs to get what he needs to get done and it hasn't been achieved yet. It's just, it's fluid like that. But of course, if I'm talking those kind of numbers, 15 hours, you're looking at a very hefty paycheck there. So um, it's all relative, really. But as I said, this job is paying for your time. So that's what it is. Whether you work or not, it's neither here nor there. It's literally they're paying for your time. Whether you, when I say whether you work, I mean whether you get used to be on set and to you know film is another story. But you're, they're paying for your time. So yeah, it's very easy to get overtime pay and more money added on to your... I guess your original or your basic as it were. Another point of a pro, another pro is that dependent upon where you've been located, situated um, and placed by the director or maybe the first AD or whoever, um, it's probably often the third, they usually deal with that kind of stuff on set. The third, when I say AD, I mean assistant director. I don't want to assume that everyone knows all the terms, you know, I guess the terminologies, but I mean the assistant director um, will often the crowd third will often place people where they need to be for the scene um, and depending upon where you are a, a pro could be that you move into being featured so maybe the main talent the the cast as it were um, you know they are passing by where where you are placed and that you know then you might be asked to do something and and then you know little background you has now become a mega superstar. <laughs> Uh, so it's it's easy to in some ways be promoted to that and of course that's if you want to and of course I'm sure if you were really against it and you just wanted to be an SA I don't want to do anything extra I just want to do this then I'm sure they would, they would swap you out and do whatever but most people be you know eating a third AD or second AD's fingers off to try and get that that position because also it equals more pay so um yeah it's easy to it's, it's when I want to say it's easy it's I, I mean it, it's it's not happened to me, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> not yet, but it's definitely something that... Oh, yeah, it nearly happened, actually, as I filmed on The Witcher. Um, and then they ended up cancelling doing the... I mean, we were practising, kind of going through the scene. We filmed it a few times, and then they scrapped the whole scene um, and that part. So, and they did, Or they didn't want that, that kind of thing with the background artist to happen. So, therefore, we didn't get featured after all, me and the people that I was standing around. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I would say that that is something that is, is, is likely to happen, could happen, might not happen, but it's all good. At least you're there and you know that your basic is always going to be your an essay. So yeah. And another pro, I think this is going to be the last pro, the main standout pro for me is that you get all your meals included. So no packed lunch boxes, no nothing. You have to kind of make sure you're out shopping at Sainsbury's or Aldi or Lidl. I said Aldi, trying to merge, yeah, Aldi or Lidl, having to go there the night before to wake up at, you know, 4am to be on the M25. You get all your meals included. So breakfast. You've got your breakfast. Um, when I say breakfast, I mean it's hot and cold food. So it's a full, like, full-on English breakfast, really, at most places. Um, and then you've also got or options, you know, um, vegetarian options as well. And then you've also got your cold, you know, your cereals and your fruit and stuff like that and croissants. It, it Once again, that also is reflective of the budget as well. You know, it's, it's sometimes telling. I've been on some sets where it's like, Okay, they've literally got not two pence to rub together. <laughs> I'm joking. But um, yeah, I mean, after a while as well, when you've been on the, you know, this a lot of sets, you kind of get a bit bougie. I'm not going to lie. It's like, okay, no, that's not good food. That, you know, you become like that. I mean, you know, I'm not saying I've ever been that way, but yes, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Also, with regards to uh, film extra work as well, you will be charged. So you're, in essence, you're self-employed, yeah? You are a freelancer. That's what it is because you are your own boss, as it were. You decide if you want to show up for the day. And you'll take your own, you know, paycheck home. You'll see all the breakdown of the payments as well. And I will say that agencies, they tend to take off, you know, as their commission, naturally, as agency, 10 to 20 percent and i say 20 percent more on the higher end higher end 
of that is a particular agency that are actually like a middleman in some ways. So on the pop platform, which I will also put in the link, you know, I am signed up to some agency so to pop, but then they have different agencies under their, uh, you know, their, their setup. So, you know, they've got different agencies, so you'll get charged more in commission. And I think it does actually equal to about a 20% that's coming out of your paycheck rather than that of 10% or 15. So ideally, of course, you want to, you know, get jobs that are 10 to 15 percent because obviously it's more money home for you um and so yeah these uh, these agencies will leave you to be responsible to deal with your you know taxes and everything else so you'll have to deal with that if you do deal with that um some people won't maybe earn over the threshold per year so they'll be all right not to you know necessarily kind of register their income with the tax man um but yeah, they leave it down to you to sort out your taxes, basically. So you'll get the full net pay and that will be down to you to sort out. OK, and cons now. So some of the cons that I was thinking about, some of the standout cons is that it's funny hours of work. So it's not sociable. You know, um, you can't necessarily say to Fred, oh, yeah, Fred, um, let's meet for a beer down at the, the local pub at seven because you don't know if you'll be back by seven. You don't know if, you know, your day is pretty open. We, as essays, don't often get the word on call time, on wrap times. We get the call time because that's what our agency sends us. Obviously, we need to know when we need to be, you know, at the location on set, in the studio, whatever. But the wrap time is often not disclosed to that of ourselves, peasants like ourselves. Um, so yes, no rap time given, but you know, sometimes it's word through the, through the grapevine. We'll find out if we hear something, if we maybe talk to a third AD, they'll let us know what the, what the goss is on the rap time. So that might give you an estimate, but even then that's an estimate. Nobody knows you could finish earlier, you could finish later. And so, you know, and then you've also got to consider de-rigging as well. So not just, you know, you obviously go to in the morning to get dressed um, you know, um, everything from hair to make, you have to go into the hair and makeup, wardrobe, and then also to de-rig as well. And it depends on the crowd, how many people there are, you know, but you could be waiting. That could in itself could be an hour after you've even wrapped, you know, if it takes a while to get everyone through. So yeah, it's something that is funny hours of work. I wouldn't necessarily say it's for people with young children. I mean, you know, especially on the times where I've even spoken to parents on set, you know, and they're like, oh gosh, you know, they've had their phone taken from them. Um, when I say that they've had their phone taken from them, that like they have, when you're signing in, they have a phone shack. So they'll have people, uh, you know, like they kind of look like security people. They're dressed in all black and they've got their kind of James Bond looking suitcases. But these suitcases are full of phones that are the essays. So, you know, they'll take it from you. They, they'll ask you if you have a phone. So that's one thing. They won't just start, like, you know, you don't get strip search about it. It is, they ask you, where's your, you know, your phone, please. And then, you, you know, you give it. And then you put it, and then they put it in the thing. And then they give you a card. So, you know, when it comes to any kind of time, you it might be in holding area, not being used. So, sometimes, on some occasions, they'll let, allow you to have your phone at that point. Um, but it's definitely far away from anywhere that's filming. I, I guess these are high confidentiality filming productions that go on like this. And in, in particular, I've experienced this mainly at Warner Brothers Studio. They'll take you, they, they are definitely adamant on taking phones uh, when it comes to Warner Brothers Productions. So, yes, that's what I would say for the pros. Funny hours of work, not really ideal for those with young children um, because... Uh, yeah obviously naturally even the day-to-day -day, you know waking up at four o'clock in the morning you know and, and not knowing when you're going to come home it's just I don't know that's between you, you and your family it's not my business I just I'm just I'm just sharing what my you know my general experience has been and what I think um when I think about in this industry and and what it requires and yeah I'm just thinking so yes I would say that Okay, so another con I would say is that sometimes you can feel like you're cattle. So when it comes to these bigger productions, once more, uh, sometimes I would actually say the smaller the production, the better. Because I say that because you get treated better sometimes. And I'm not saying that these 
assistant directors and people you come across in production are horrible um but st- such things as the you know not being allowed certain things such as the craft which is i might leave a picture but just like a juice bar coffee bar like you know everything's fresh there but the essays aren't allowed it these are on bigger productions but then you know we'll only get like water and an option of pg tips or nest cafe granules to choose from <laughs> you know you, you you get sometimes treated like cattle so it's and I, I do get it as well because I've I have been if you're just watching me for the first time I've been in production I I was a producer before I was uh furloughed um and then when you know got released from my company so I've been in production as well so I know both sides and I do understand it I do because everything comes down to cost at the end of the day I have a business mind anyway and of course, if you can cut costs with a, a bunch of essays, 200 of them taking, you know, I don't know, three, three pound 50 coffees per time. And this is this is without any limitations. So you can go for coffees as much as you like in the day um, at the crafts. You know, that's going to come to a lot of money. So I, I do get it. It's not doesn't seem fair. It's not oh, get treated like this, but it's a part of it's a part of the nature of the industry. And that just has to be OK. It's not um, that much of a big deal. Um, so, yes, you get treated like cattle. It's only because as well, you know, lunch is, uh, come on, guys. And, you know, ran here, ran there. And, and it just can feel like I'm just another sheep. Bah. That's all you need to say is bah. Because sometimes you'll feel like you are a sheep. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I just bad. But, <laughs> but, yeah, that's what I would say as an honest take on this whole essay life is that you can feel like you're sheep on the bigger productions but on the smaller productions everything tends to be quite dandy definitely tends to be quite dandy um yeah it's just more intimate you know i guess less egos as well and everything else so less noise and yeah so i would say the smaller productions sometimes have more of a pro that to working on um but sometimes as well, those smaller productions are also smaller money. Just keep it 100, it's smaller money. So the bigger productions are sometimes, you know, churning out chits of, when I say chit, I mean like, you know, I guess, yeah, paychecks um, of hundreds a day. Whereas when you're on a smaller production, it's like, it can be quite measly, to be fair. Um, so, yes, that's what I would say there. Uh, and also I would say as well with TV and film it's different so TV does tend to pay lower rates as well so you know um, I mean I don't want to start getting into names and stuff like that but yeah TV generally starts to pay less money um, on, on those productions and yeah I mean I've walked away with £80 for a day's work before um, which is not, just to be honest, I'm not looking to repeat that. <laughs> I don't like the idea of that. But, you know, once again, if it's something that could be local to your home in terms of the studio or whatever it is, then, you know, £80 might be just better than kind of being at home. So it's... another thing I would say as a con, uh, my last con, is that uh, there's no one really to protect you. When I say that, I mean, you do have... Um, I've forgotten the term. It's not the committee. You do have... What's the term? We have to remember as essays that the agency that you're with, their clients um, are their clients. And this is ultimately, this goes down to business. So it's the agency's job to keep the clients happy. They want to... Um, with which with with whatever casting you know director or booker they want good relationships there it's a very, very relationship based industry so if there's anything that happens on set with regards to an essay um with regards to you know your agency getting involved or fighting for you as it were they got to tread carefully you know not saying that they you know they, they can't resolve issues but it has to be done tactfully rightfully and of course, they they want to protect their relationship with their clients. If they obviously, if their clients don't want them anymore, they stop getting money. You know, thus even the actual individual bookers stop getting their commissions. So it's all relative, and it's all. I'm just saying that in terms of you being protected, as it were, um, there are rights for supporting artists, definitely. 
but don't feel like your agency is going to have your back and be fighting for you if there's an issue with someone in the production team, for example. Um, you know, and, and they, they do actually advise as well that if there are any issues or discrepancies with regards to, you know, um, before you leave, like such as a featured role that you were, you went into speaking something on, on camera. So that would be more money, you know, because an essay role is really just a non-speaking role. Um, but if they, if you went um, to do something speaking wise, that needs to be logged basically so that you can get more money. So when it comes to you rapping at the end of the day and you go to sign out and they might sometimes reveal what you've got. Um, what your your final pay is you could be like oh you know um sorry i did have a speaking thing um can you check with jessica please or annie um uh, the ad who's often the person that might, might have logged it um and then that would confirm okay yeah you know but obviously don't forget your agency is not physically there so they can't see all of that stuff so if there, if there are any if there are any issues it's best to deal with stuff right right away you know um stuff like that of what i mentioned of course um so yes i would say that it's a role where you're yeah you're not really protected like that it's not like you have a full-on employer it's with regards to agencies there are no limitations with regards to how many agencies you can be a part of some people are, are just only with the one because that's what suits them maybe they get regular work and sometimes or maybe they're just you know their work is dribs and drabs and they're fine with that some people are a part of like we've got 20 agencies i definitely have about five plus five to six i think agencies i'm signed up to um obviously i hear back i hear from some more than others and i prefer to work for some agencies more than others sometimes you'll get asked for requests availability requests as they call it about the same production from different agencies so that means that both well, both or more agencies are working on, more than one agency are working on this particular production and looking for essays. So you might get invites, I say invites, but availability requests um, from either agency. And I guess it's up to you where you want to go, what you want to, uh, you know, who you want to go with. Is it a case of you're looking at who charges more commission? then obviously, of course, you might, be, yeah, that's obviously understandable why you would choose a certain agency over the other that you're signed up to. Um, maybe it's a different role that's come through and you prefer the sound of, you know, one over the other. Whatever it is, it's up to you and you're totally within your rights to say yes or no to a particular job. I believe I've covered the main things. I feel like I've given you some kind of understanding idea, some depth into what film supporting artist work is like. And if I, yeah, if you've got any questions about it at all, email me, write something in the description box and I'd be happy to hear from you, definitely. I'd love to answer any questions you have. This is something, as I said, that I do on a full-time basis. I choose when I work um, and yeah, it's definitely flexy and it's great. It's definitely fitting for my life right now as a voiceover um, person, as someone that as well as working on my own businesses. I need time. So, you know, they can pay for my time, which is fantastic. But, you know, if I'm not used, which is, I was even on set yesterday, actually, and I spent the whole day. I mean, they had coaches as the holding area and they had five coaches and I was on one of the coaches you know, nice and warm for the whole day. That was me. Got dressed up in my attire. My little, put my little wig afro on. Not this afro. This is my hair. <laughs> um, but yes, I had I had all of that. Put my attire on. I was ready to go on set, really. But you know, some of us, a few of us on that particular coach were there all day, and that was fine for me because I was on my phone. I was working on content. It was fine. I had no complaints. And some people are desperate to be used when I meet them and talk to them. Um, at the tea station or something and other people they just they're like me they don't mind use me or don't use me I'm, I'm still getting paid <laughs> so um that's my thing and, and this is I, I would say that this is very smart working for anyone that wants to as I said has got their maybe own aspirations um and, and things that they're working on maybe they want to read more books and you know they'll use that time up for sitting around to read more books Whatever, whatever it is, it does work and it works if you make it work. And it's also, I think it's, yeah, it's not a bad, it's not a bad stream of income. It's not a bad career to have at all. And I, I really try to minimize. I know I, because I'm, I've been in production, I do tend to 
you know, so of times that I've complained bits a bit and a bit and a bit, and I'm like, do you know what? I'm more mindful now because I'm like, I'm, I'm just like, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the time to work. Grateful for the time to be on set. Whoever I meet is who I meet, and it's not always nice to have a few laughs here and there and get to know people. As I said, other times I just want to be silent and just do my own thing. Um, but whatever it is, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to work on many productions and have a plethora of different roles and stuff like that. Um, even the other day I did a wet scene. Oh my gosh, never again. But I was it was a rain machine and it rained for three days. When I say three days, obviously we went back home and we came back out. It was, you know, it's, oh, it was just awful. Rain is not for me. Being in the rain, well, it's not for, it's not for most black people, honey. I'm just going to let you know. Because, yeah, the hair and all that. Other, no, it's just not my life. Being wet and cold all day, I don't think so. So anyway, had that, that was an experience though, you know, so it's something I can't, I'm grateful for the experience, but will I be doing it again? When I see another availability request come through, it is going to get declined nicely, swiftly, because I don't want to be in the rain again, but I've done it, you know, I've done it now and I can say that and I've got paid for it obviously. And so that's it, you know, but um, yes, guys, I did say I was going to try and keep this short. I do hope I can condense this video down to maybe seven minutes. Maybe that's a reach, maybe 10. But yes, thank you so much for watching. Bye.